Hi everyone, how are you guys tonight? You guys, it is another Thursday night and you guys are live here on the Brush by Brandy Facebook and Instagram pages. My name is Brandy and I'm the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy. Um, my husband Sean is here behind the camera helping us out. We are super lucky to have him. Um, he's going to help us answer any questions so you guys pop on along the way and ask anything that you're curious about. I'm curious, are you in trouble for something? Because you never say, hey, we're super lucky to have him. So well, I think you're guilty uh, about something. No, it's, it, it comes up every once in a while in my comments, and we really are. Because oh. it is really hard to do a live where I try to read the comments while I'm painting and try to answer all the questions. Um, it's just a huge, huge, huge help to have a second person. So, you guys, everybody, you guys always show love to Sean, but let's show him extra love tonight. <laughs> Plus, he's been working really hard today. I've been watching um, other people work. If you well, if you guys follow my page, we are having really um, bad weather in California right now. We have this; they're calling it a, a monsoon. Uh, came it's a through. pineapple express. Yeah, it's a, a two hundred year storm, and we had sixty mile an hour winds last night. Me and Sean haven't slept because you just think like we're sur we have five acres, we're surrounded by trees, and we're just like, okay, what's gonna get broken tonight? Uh, I swear, I thought those winds were coming through the windows. That's, it was crazy last night. Um, but we've had guys here all day doing tree work, so it's been it's been kind of it's been kind of exciting. They were awesome. If you guys are local to me here in California in the Sacramento area, check out Johnson Tree Care. They're on Facebook. Um, awesome guys, awesome guys. They rocked it today. They got everything done that we wanted done. Prices were good. On a crazy weather day. Yeah, yeah, it was pouring down rain. It didn't even phase them. And they were out hungry for work. I love that. So, um, I mean, they were super grateful. I posted some some reels uh, showing their work onto my Facebook and Instagram pages. So go watch those because they're thrilled to have the have the views. And uh, so they were just really cool guys. Oh, yeah. Bomb Cyclone. A yeah. bomb cyclone. Like that yeah. doesn't, I've never even heard of that. Should those two go together? Doesn't sound like it should be happening. That sounds like my farewell tour. Okay, so I showed you guys on my page this cedar chest that I'm working on. And I know it's a few steps ahead, but I did uh, get all these steps on um, on video. So when I put this together for a final tutorial, uh, it'll have everything on here. But let me tell you what I've done to this so far. So obviously I took off the skirting on the bottom. If you pick up these cedar chests, you guys, the skirting comes off remarkably easy every time it's held on by some screws underneath it's gonna have a bead of glue on it so you unscrew all the screws and then a few taps with the hammer to get uh, loosen that bead of glue and the skirting comes off every time just like a first day yeah <laughs> 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 all right we're gonna have to go edit that's, edit, that's edit. it that's it for tonight's live thank you everybody we're signing out great i can't even follow that up Okay. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so the skirting comes off every time. It's super easy. So every time I look at these cedar chests, I always envision them without that skirting. It's dated. Nobody likes the skirting. Um, I always take it off. The legs that I'm going to put on this um, are a more simple leg. Um, I have these from another piece of furniture, but I replaced uh, these with wheels. But I'm going to use them on here. And they're just kind of a tapered leg. Um, we'll do this uh, when I, once I get to this step. We'll put these on the underside together. Uh, so we're going to add legs to pop this back up off the ground. Now, just out of curiosity, does the skirting would the skirting usually cover those legs? Well, right now the skirt's off, but she has no legs. Yes. So it's That's weird. That's a little weird. It makes you uncomfortable, yeah. right? So we're going to fix that, but not till later. Um, and then I, uh, it has kind of these, I, I would say this is kind of a dated curve right here on this door, but I didn't want to deconstruct it because it would mean all this. I, I like these more clean edges that are here on the center. I didn't like this curve. It's a little kind of 80s looking, but I'm going to embr embrace it because uh, as much thinking as I try to do of ways that I could fix that, they all seem like it would probably make it worse. You know, sometimes fixes make it worse. So I'm going to embrace it. And I added these, these are wood you bend moldings. And I added these to the centers um, to kind of give it a more clean aesthetic. And it makes this curve make sense to have a circle underneath it. Oh, Michelle's got a point. We may have just lost our general rating or G rating. Oh yeah. No, it's definitely PG 13 now. Yeah. 
Definitely. We're moving up. So the world. get all get all the little ones out. Seat of belts. The room. Okay, so I want to talk about a whole bunch of stuff tonight. And then I've got a coat of primer on this. Uh, and the primer that I used on this is Wiseal primer in light gray. I love their primer, you guys. It is a gripping primer and a stain blocking primer in one. This was oak. Um, and so I did use that primer just so that I don't experience bleed through. I filled my hardware holes because um, I, I don't think those are going to go back on. They're pretty ugly. Um, and then I sanded my top down. So we're going to talk about some wood finishes tonight. It's been a while since we talked about uh, wood. Okay. So this had a full wood, uh, wood stain top on it. And I took this finish down to the bare wood. I sanded this one. So usually when I'm going to take something back to a, a raw wood, I, um, I look at a couple things. I will sand a corner with my uh, a power sander to see how it sands off. If it gets sticky or gummy or it takes me like 30 minutes to get through a corner, then I know that that's going to be a bear to strip with a, with a sander and I will use a chemical stripper first. Okay, so I always do a test spot and that tells me, do I need to go to chemical stripper or am I gonna be able to sand this finish off? Um, chemical stripper is not easier. You guys, it doesn't replace sanding, it's in addition to sanding. You still have to sand even if you use a chemical stripper. Um, by chemical stripper, I mean, you know, the gallons that you get at the hardware store, it eats through the old finish on here. Um, I did not use that on this one because I was able to sand it. It sanded pretty easily. Uh, it took me about 20 minutes to uh, sand this down. Um, so I used my power sander. This is the Surf Prep. And I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, how I choose pads that I put on here and what goes on the Surf Prep. Hey, really quick question. Uh, Yvonne's got a, a, a good are. question. Um, Happy New did, Year, you Did guys. I get her New Year's gift? Oh, did you? Oh, maybe did she forget to send it? I mean, she's really, it's a legitimate question. I kids? See, I only have to have a question on there because I don't get the mail. I'm, rap, I'm racking my brain. I'm racking my brain, Yvonne. I might need a clue, but don't tell Sean. Just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm we'll thinking, move on. Okay, it's not coming to me. Help me. I need a refresher. I need a refresher. We're hitting that age. Okay, so this is the red pad that's attached to my surf prep sander. This stays on. I can replace it like when the corners start getting a little bit worn um, I will replace this this one is getting a little worn I'm pretty rough on my sander uh, I would say I replace this once a year and I probably need to do it once every six months <laughs> so like this corner up here is pretty rough it's just they just get really worn down and that just means I'm writing that corner of my sander um, so these just screw off with four screws on the back and I can replace this pad anytime I need to. Um, I do have a new one, but I have not replaced it yet. Anytime you're using um, any kind of abrasive on your surf prep, you want to use an interface pad. A digital gift. Oh, <laughs> that's much easier. <laughs> um, no, no uh, you don't have to think about what we've got in the mail. Um, okay, so this interface pad will protect uh, the backup pad on my surf prep. Okay, so I put, I always use that interface pad, and that's just a, it's just a form of protection. There are lots of options with your surf prep sander as far as abrasives go. And I brought a bunch out, and I swear I don't know where they went. I swear okay. I could really lose this G rating. <laughs> they're just so much. It. No, so, they're not. I am. You're, but so, you're so tempted right yeah, now. Yeah. Okay, and then I need to choose what type of abrasive I want to put on. Sorry guys, that's my vacuum. Okay, Surf Prep has two, uh, two choices that are good for sanding a flat surface. And this is a nice flat surface. These are their films. The films are just a little bit thicker. Um, they're rumored to be a little more durable. And these are papers, okay? Uh, they both have Velcro backing. I, get, I order mine with the four holes because I have a four hole uh, vacuum model of the sander. Um, I usually get the films. I really like the papers though, but everybody tells me these are more durable, but I, I don't know. I think the papers are great too. So when I'm sanding to raw wood, I usually start out with an 80 grit, which is a really high grit. It's really rough, but it's gonna take it down through the finish. So I start with an 80 grit. When you're going up through grits, you never wanna jump more than 100. Okay, so if I start at, at an 80, my next level, I wouldn't go more than a 180. 
Does that make sense? There's a jump of 100 in the grid number. Um, but I usually go 80, 120, 220. That's my bread and butter. That's what I stand most everything with. So I start with my 80 grit to eat through the finish, go to a 120, which is what I've got here, and then a 220. Oh, hello. Okay. Juan says, sorry, before I tell you, let me preface it by saying that I can't resist the temptation to be naughty once in a while. <laughs> hello. <laughs> It is, it is all too tempting. We resist a lot. <laughs> okay, so for sanding flat surfaces, it's pretty straightforward. Those just go right on there, and I can sand my flat surface. I'm going to point out something. I have a surf prep vacuum also, so every time I hit my um, surf prep sander to turn that on, it's also going to turn my vacuum on. So uh, the surf prep vacuum is amazing, and I have a video that I'm going to put out on it this week. Uh, because I no longer have to get up and turn my vacuum on and then sand and then go back and turn my vacuum off. Anytime I engage my sander, it automatically turns my vacuum on. So watch. Listen. And then there's just a little delay and it automatically turns the vacuum off after I uh, let up on that. Okay, so my... Uh, my um, films or the papers are great for sanding a flat surface. But this has a rounded edge on it. So what do I do for the rounded edge? Let me show you what I did on this one. So I showed you guys this guy last week and I told you it was awesome for stripping, um, but I used it on this too. So you see how it's got, this is a carbide scraper and it's got a, a metal blade in there. And I took that and I was able to get this super fine crevice right here Okay, that usually you can't get or you've got to manually sand and I get that blade right into the corner and it can scrape out that finish from right into that edge. You ever use a sandblaster? Um, so not a sandblaster, but uh, we've done soda blasting, which is um, baking soda. It's, uh, it's um, calcium carbonate. We did that. Uh, I don't do that often because it makes a huge mess. And it's really for when you want to strip down to an all wood finish on really, really intricate details. So I'm a painter, so I don't all that often need to strip down to bare wood. I would really do that if I wanted a wood stain finish. Otherwise, I'm going to paint over whatever is there. I find out what the gift is. <laughs> do, am I allowed a to video know? of my favorite feminine deodorant products. <laughs> Just what you always wanted. Somehow this came up with our friends on New Year's too, talking about this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, okay, so when you want to sand corners, you've got a few, and I mean a rounded surface like this, you've got a few options. I can take my surf prep and I can take off this interface pad and I can add a padded one. See this guy here has squished to it. It's like my love handles. All right, and this Velcro's on. And then I can put on my same flat paper or film and now I've got a surface that has squished to it. So that's one option. The other option is these guys here. Just got this new box. Okay, this is a, um, this is a uh, variety pack. So it's got all different thicknesses and coarseness in the pack. Okay, so I would recommend if you're just starting out with your surf prep to start with the variety packs. When you, I always tell people to order the kit if you're just getting a brand new sander because it comes with a variety of abrasives and then you can test out everything and see what you use the most and just reorder those. But you get a feel for everything, what it's for, what would I use that for, what does it feel like, how squishy is it? So these are two different ones. This guy is more, has way more give to the foam so it's gonna wrap a corner like this much easier. This one's a little firmer. So it's not gonna wrap that as easy, but it will give me some, I can get some conformity out of it. So for curves like this, I can take a pad. That's super fine. I wouldn't use super fine for stripping. I usually will start with a medium, which is the heaviest grit. Whoops. I don't need this, because this is only when I wanna transform a flat paper into a squishy surface. I can just use this. And that goes on, and this will wrap this edge right here. 
Let's see if I can get this turned so you guys can see it. Can you see how now my, my um, abrasive conforms to that surface and wraps right on that edge? vacuum to turn on. I'm going to stop turning that on because it does have about a 30 second delay. Um, so that's how I would get around corners like this that have this sort of um, a curved surface is I use the curved foam pads. So I hope that was a little bit helpful to see all the different things but but honestly the variety packs and then you know I know when I'm ordering these guys the flat films 80, 122, 20, that's what I get. That's what I use the most of. So those are easy. And then these in the variety pack gives me a little bit of everything. And that's kind of what I usually order from Surf Prep. Um, that gives me just about everything to cover all my bases. Um, I wash out my sanding sponges. So after you've used them a few times, they can tend to get a little uh, beat up. Here's a couple that are well worn. If you use beat up sanding pads like this, um, they'll start to leave swirls in your finish. If you're getting swirls in your finish, it can be a couple things. It either means you've got a sanding pad on there that's too beat up, it's got stuff stuck in it, it's gonna start leaving swirl marks. So check your paper if you're getting swirls. Um, it can mean your grit is not high enough. It means you need to step your grit up a little bit. Um, it can also mean that you need to reset your sander, and there's a process for that on um, YouTube. Super simple. You just have to press a combination of the buttons. It does some beeping, and it resets the sander um, back to its original uh, factory setting. I drop mine on a regular basis, pretty much daily. Yeah, I do. I drop it a lot. Um, and, it, and it stands up, but it does mean that every once in a while I need to, like, jolt it back into, like, position. Okay, so that was some just some basics on the surf prep and how I sand a top. So this one I took down, I used the carbide scraper in the edges. I used my rounded sanding pads on the um, corners and I've got and my 80, 122, 20 on the top. I'm ready for wood stain. We're going to put some wood stain on tonight. Okay, so it's a really pretty nice finish. And how do I choose wood stain? Okay, so I usually will start out with a pre-stain conditioner. And what a pre-stain conditioner does, this one is from Minwax, is it will prepare the wood to accept stain and accept it more evenly. Um, so it does exactly, it conditions the wood to accept a stain. Um, a pre-stain conditioner comes in a oil-based formula. It also comes in a water-based formula. How you choose depends on what kind of stain you're going to use. If you're going to use a water-based stain, you want the water-based uh, conditioner. If you use an oil-based stain, you want the oil-based conditioner. So I'm going to use an oil-based stain. I have the oil-based wood conditioner. This is from Minwax. It's from the hardware store. And I have two different types of stains here, and we'll use both. I'm going to put some gloves on because I do not like my hands being wood stained for the next week. So I do recommend wearing gloves when you're staining wood. And we're going to go ahead and put a conditioner on this, and, and I'll show you guys how the conditioner goes on. Um, that white box right there, can you just, those are just trip brushes. Can you just grab one? Can I throw them at you? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to open my wood conditioner. And Sean's grabbing me a chip brush. So I'm just going to put this on with just a cheap chip brush. Super easy. This is just, it's all, it's its really a thin, thin, thin liquid, like water. So I don't want to drip it on the front of my piece, so I'm going to put it over the top. And this I will just, you want to give it a nice ample coat and the wood's going to soak it right up. So I'm going to put this wood stain conditioner on my piece. Very, very thin liquid. It will drip and run really easily. Now stand up for this. It's a super easy process to put the conditioner on though. It literally just brushes on like a water. You can also put this on with a, a rag or a sponge. 
So if I were to use this guy here, which is just a sock, and I can dip it in there and I can wipe it on with a rag. So that's just personal preference, how you want to put your conditioner on. For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and just finish up with the rag. And I try to get a nice even coat and I want to make sure that I cover all of the wood. Um, especially this is a pretty clean was a pretty clean top it didn't have any stains or abnormality in it the um, previous clear coat on it was still in really good condition so I'm not um, if, if you have stains in your wood and you're trying to keep those from popping back through I mean stains like from water from a candle from something some damage to the top that you sand it out and you don't want that to reappear, you definitely want to use a conditioner. This did not have anything like that, so I'm not really worried about that. Okay, once I've got that coat on, I'm gonna wipe away any excess, and we're gonna leave this for about five minutes. We're just gonna let that wood absorb it. Okay, so I wiped away all my excess, just gonna let the wood absorb the, the conditioner. You don't have to leave it overnight. You can come back fairly quickly after you condition it. I'll make sure I get under this edge. And I'll still be able to put on my wood stain tonight. Okay, so for stains, I have two options out here. I have a gel stain. This one's from General Finishes, which is kind of the gold standard of gel stain. They have a beautiful gel stain. You can get this online. There's retailers nationwide. Uh, you can get it at woodworking stores like Woodcrafters or um, Rockler has it. Um, gel stains are exactly what they sound like. It's a gel formula, so it's gonna be thicker. Um, you wanna make sure you seal the tops on these really well when you close it up so that it doesn't dry out. This is a pretty big can to go through a quart of gel stain. It also comes in a smaller size too. Uh, a quart is a lot of gel stain, and I try to make sure I can use all of it. So you want to make sure you seal those cans. But you can see how just on the lid, it doesn't drip or run. So it's more of a gel formula. It's thicker. Um, gel stains tend to sit more on top of the wood. They only penetrate the wood shallowly. Uh, they don't seep into it deep like a penetrating stain does. This is a penetrating wood stain. This one's from Minwax. This is a liquid formula. Okay, so if I hold this up, it's going to want to run off the lid. It's a liquid. It's kind of a, a, a thicker liquid, but, um, but it's definitely a liquid. You can see it's going to drip. Okay. Um, for penetrating stains, you need to put it on a raw wood surface. So a uh, gel stain I can use over the top of an existing finish. So if I just wanted to change the color of this to a little bit darker, I could put a little bit of gel stain over the top without having to strip it to raw wood. So you can use gel stain over an existing finish. Penetrating stain needs to be at raw wood. Um, I'm going to show you both of these options on this piece tonight so you can kind of see. They're a pretty similar color. This, is, uh, this color is called Java from General Finishes. And this is called Jacobian from Minwax, and they're pretty similar. These are my most used colors in both of these lines for a dark stain. I'm going to use my same sock. Um, I like old socks for putting on wood stain. Uh, you want to make sure they're cotton socks. Don't choose those synthetic fabrics and wool and stuff because it will stick a bunch of fibers in your wood. Um, so try to use cotton if you have them. Um, okay, so I'm going to try my gel stain first nice and thick and gives me really good coverage. I'm telling you General Finishes gel stain is like the Cadillac of gel stains. So I'm going to wipe it on, make sure I get it into all the wood grain. And you can kind of see, and I can layer this, I can build it up. So if I don't like this color, I want it darker, I can add more and continue to darken this as I go. 
Okay, so that's the gel stain, and then I'll do my penetrating stain over here. It's a little premature. I probably would let my uh, pre-stain conditioner sit a little bit longer, but we're going to remove it. We're going to go with it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to a new part of my rag that doesn't have any um, conditioner on it. I am going to stir this one, which means I need a stir stick. I'll use, I'll use this paintbrush handle right here. Uh, penetrating, <laughs> penetrating stains, the colors can settle at the bottom. I use this one fairly often, so it's not very settled, but you always want to make sure you stir your wood stain. And I just stained the handle of this paintbrush. It's now a dark, beautiful wood. Look at that. Fabulous. Okay, so this formula will uh, drip, and I don't want to drip it on my piece, so I'm going to dip my rag in there. So no, these are not the socks that I was wearing. Uh, no, I didn't make Sean take his socks off. Not tonight. Um, the Java has a little more red in it than this Jacobian does. Okay, and same process. I just wiped that on. These are both going on to raw wood. I'm actually going to go with the Jacobian on this one, but I wanted you guys to see you can put a gel stain on to raw wood. It's pretty similar going on to raw wood. Uh, the benefits of gel stain are that you can use it over an existing finish. Um, but I'm also trying to match this to another piece that does have this Jacobian stain on the top. But here's where I'm going to get stuck. There were different species of wood and every species of wood takes uh, stain differently. So I'm going to need to layer this. This is going to take more than one coat of wood stain to get this as dark as the piece I'm trying to match it to. So I just know to plan on that. I'm going to move this up and try to not spill it. Um, when we first moved into my workspace, my son was helping carry all my wood stains and I was sitting on the floor putting them on the shelf and he walked up to the front of me and hands me the wood stain and literally drops it and the wood stain went everywhere and I was coated in wood stain. There's still a stain on our garage floor from all my wood stain getting spilled. That was not a good memory. Um, it's oil-based, so it was greasy and oily and sticky. And it is not coming out. Yep, and um, on my skin, oil removes oil. So when you're trying to clean wood stain off your skin, I went and bathed in coconut oil. I smelled like a bakery like a coconut like a coconut okay so i'm just going to get my first coat on here and i'm going to leave this because i know this is going to take multiple coats and i may even need to use that gel stain to get the darker color that i want on here but i'm going to try a couple layers of this penetrating stain now that i've wiped it all over i've got a lot of uneven spots i don't want to leave those so i'm going to come back and give it a nice long even linear strokes always going with the grain of my wood all the way across my piece until it's nice and even and then i will leave this to dry i will let the coats dry overnight in between and then i'll come back and add my next coat okay so i've got good coverage there this is much lighter than what i want it to be so i definitely know i need to layer this but that gives me a first coat on the top. Usually when I'm doing a wood stain top, I um, do the top first because um, I don't want to have, so I got hair in my face, so I'm trying to get it out without wiping wood stain on my face. Um, I don't want to accidentally drip wood stain onto my painted body, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna show you guys on video so I did that. Normally I would have my top done and sealed and everything, and then I could come back and paint my body. So let's leave this for tonight. This top is actually not attached. So I'm gonna move it back a little bit so that I can paint the face of this. Oh, it is locked though. This is a Lane cedar chest. Uh, Lane has a recall. Oh, it has the shelf in there. All right, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to pop this up because I didn't unscrew the shelf inside yet. Lane has a recall on their lock mechanisms. So if you're redoing a Lane cedar chest, they will send you a 
new lock mechanism. It takes a couple of months, but you just go onto their website and you'll have to enter the numbers for the cedar chest. Um, and they'll send you a new lock mechanism that you can replace this one with. It just screws out and you pop the new one in. So make sure you do that, especially this one's going into a child's room. This is actually for my niece, you guys. Um, let's get started putting paint on here. Yes. I don't know how far I'll get on the paint, but I wanted to, cause I wanted to talk to you guys about a couple things with paint too. Okay, whenever you're doing paint like this, I'm gonna do a blended finish on the front. But if I wanna make different shades of the same color, can you grab me an artist brush or just bring that whole caddy that's right there? Thank you. Okay. So I told you this is going purple. So this is my main body color. Um, I did a dresser already in this color. So I over mixed my paint when I did the dresser, knowing that I needed to do another piece for her eventually. My niece is six months old now. So I did that dresser about six months ago. And my sister has done a cedar chest for her girls that um, goes at the foot of their bed like a bench and it'll have all of her special things as she grows up so my older niece who's uh, almost three who actually yeah she is three now oh my gosh uh, has one and this will be for the baby okay so I'm making it to match her dresser that she already has but if you're doing a blend one way that you can make colors that coordinate with each other is you can pre-mix your colors so I'm going to show you how I can take the same base color here, which is this plum that I mixed. This is a mix of Wise Owl paint in black cherry, and I mixed it with some black and some antique villa. But if I want to make three different shades of this base color now, I can take a little bit of black and add it to it, and this will give me a darker shade of the same color. I can add as little or as much black as I want. So that'll give me a darker shade of it. And then if I add a little bit of white, this will give me a lighter shade of the same color. And that gives me three tones. I've got a light, a medium, and a dark that I can create a blended finish with. They all will coordinate because I use the same base. So if you're not sure what colors to use or you wanna create different tones of your colors, having a black and a white, a good black and a good white will go a long way because you can mix them to create different tones of your colors. Okay, so that's basically what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna use my main body color will be the purple that I've mixed. And then where I wanna shade with it darker, I'll add a little bit of black to it. Where I want lighter spots, I'm gonna add a little bit of the white to it. All right, I'm gonna get a really rough base coat on this tonight. That's what I'm hoping. Um, I wanna keep this fairly simple. I will be adding a little bit of a transfer to this and I have some other plans for it, but right now I really just wanna get some paint on here to cover up this primer. So I see that comment earlier, Elaine uh, just recently went out of business. Oh, hmm. uh, did they really? That's kind of sad. They've been around forever. My mom had a Lane Cedar chest when I was growing up that had all of our, you know, baby clothes in it. And I mean, they are beautiful pieces of furniture. They're really nice. And I know that's what my sister hopes is that these will be pieces that grow up with my nieces, you know, that they can go on and have their stuff from their weddings in and their own kids can go in it. So hopefully they like purple. Um, I'll show you the transfer that I'm going to use on this in just a minute. Okay, so I'm going to, I just basically framed out the center of this. And I am, uh, I'm sorry, I, that Mr. Bottle that's right there. Sean's super tired. I can tell just by how he's getting up from the stool and walking to get my stuff that he's like, oh. All right, I have a Mr. Bottle with me. All right. He offered to move this over to my regular workspace and I said, no, you don't have to do that. 
All right, I'm gonna make sure I get into these corners and here's gonna be where I add that little bit of white that I was talking about. So I'm actually gonna give myself a really thin layer of my purple. Thin layer meaning I'm gonna use some water and I'm gonna mix my color rather than doing it in a bowl, I'm gonna mix it on the face of this piece. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Okay, so super thin. The coverage on that isn't great. And then I'm gonna dip a, another brush into my white. This is Wiesel paint in ivory. And I'm gonna add that highlight to the center. Okay, so that's a super easy way that I can just add that highlight by just putting that thin layer of the purple brushing a little bit of the white and working that into it. I'm gonna add a little bit more white just to the center of this medallion. So it gets even lighter as it goes towards the center. Well, when does the next storm hit? I don't know, it's raining here for like the next week straight. Like we, I don't even, I don't know if we can call it the next storm if there's just never a break. So you do not use distilled water in your mister? I don't, um, but, but um, we're on a well and we have a filtration system. So it always, always depends on what your water is like, whether you use distilled water. We just have really nice clean water. It's not hard at all. So it always depends on what your water is like. So I brush that little bit of white in. Now I'm gonna come in with a nice clean dry brush and I'm just gonna softly blend where those two meet up. It doesn't have to be perfect, this is just my base coat. Okay, and now I'm gonna come in with a little bit of the, do I want, even wanna shade with the black right now? Can I have a plate? This is my Wiesel paint. I put a few colors into these bottles. I don't like them, but I'm trying to use it all. So you guys keep seeing me use those bottles. It's just because I'm trying to use the paint that I originally put in there. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of this black just in some of the corners and I'm just gonna brush it in. Okay, so that was that top corner and I'll hit this bottom corner with a little bit. This is the same process I used on her dresser. And then when those legs go on, I'll make those nice and dark. Okay, so that's really pretty. Let's move into the center and I'm gonna kind of repeat this process until I get all the way across the front. So at this point, I have four brushes. I have a brush for each of my colors, each of my three colors, my light, my medium, and my dark. And then I have a, a dry and neutral brush. Oh, now it looks like the front of a car. The headlights. Does it? <laughs> it kind of does. Now I see it. I do plan on decorating this a little bit. I, I did fill the old hardware holes because I didn't like that hardware, but I might put new hardware. It had, um, oh, I just got paint on myself. It had these, which I don't know. I guess they're kind of cool, but I don't know. I think they're dated. So I don't think I'm going to reuse these but I might put some kind of hardware. I haven't decided yet. I want to repeat the circle, the circle theme on here. Shh. I'm running out of time, so. Um, so I want to repeat this circle theme. Since I put these medallions on, one way I thought about doing that is I have these stick and style stencils from uh, Redesign with Prima. Let me open one of these. These are adhesive stencils, but this is a polka dot one. So you peel it off, it's sticky on the back so you don't have to use a stencil adhesive. And I, I think on the sides I might use this and add some polka dots and that will repeat the cir circle theme. Um, and it comes in a large polka dot and a small polka dot. So I have both out and I'll see, I'm thinking I might use those. I'm definitely gonna use this transfer because it's also on her dresser. This is Roses and Rouge. Got some scraps in there. Oh wow, over on Instagram. Um, I apologize, Eve says, thank you for your videos. Oh, um, you. She hasn't been able to paint lately. She's been dealing with breast cancer and had oh. a mastectomy and just like watching your videos. Oh, that makes me so happy. That makes me so happy, thank you. Um, I hope you feel better and get to where you're better enough to paint. But in the meantime, absolutely, you can soak in all the information you can and I'm super glad that you're 
that you're, I don't know, finding them useful while you're going through that. Thank you. Um, sorry to take a step, uh, step back. Uh, the base color of the paint? It's a mix of Wiesel paint and black cherry, which is a deep plum. It's on the front of this can. I added a little bit of black to it and a little bit of white to it. Okay, so it's, I took this black cherry, added a little bit of black and a little bit of white. And then where I wanted a darker shade, then that became my new base shade, that mix. Where I wanted a darker shade, I added more black. Where I wanted a lighter, I added more white. So my base is a mix. That is... Um, so I'm going to use this transfer on it. This is Roses and Rouge, and I think it'll kind of drip off the side and wrap around the corner a little bit. Not too much. Overall, I want to keep it pretty clean and pretty simple. My sister is not an overly frilly person. Tana, is she frilly? Is she on? Is Tana on? I don't think so. No? Oh, she told me she was going to watch. No. Um, my sister is not an overly frilly person, so I'm just trying to keep her taste in mind. All right, let's finish this paint up or at least try. I'm using my Klingon brushes. This is the Klingon S50. And I'm just using one brush. Again, this is just my base coat. When we come back next- Oh, sorry, she's on. Oh, hey, Tan. <laughs> Sean was feeling neglected. You didn't even talk to him. Tana, is, is this what, uh, Tana is my sister, you guys. Say hi to Tana. Which Sean? Oh. Nobody said that. I'm just, <laughs> I'm a glutton for punishment. My sister is also married to a guy named Sean, spelled exactly the same way as my Sean. That makes for fun conversations. Every time you and my sister talk, it sounds like this. I talked to my Sean today. Oh yeah, I talked to my Sean and he said it always has. I'm just going to change my name to my Sean. Yeah, it always has the word my in front of it. So I know she's talking about her husband or my husband. We are both married to a Sean. So my kids have, their dad is Sean and their uncle is Sean. All right, I'm kind of just framing out these center squares here. I guess the dunkle comes up with a new meaning. Oh man, are you sure you want to say that? You know you're going into dangerous territory because you're going to get mad if I tell the story. <laughs> you guys all know the story of Sean marrying my sister. I didn't say that. He's opening up the door. I, I don't even have to tell it because well, they, they, they all know the story. That's not where I was going, but that's fine. Well, if you say dunkle, then... No. It just makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> the, a, a dun, a dunkle is a daddy uncle. <laughs> so when you add both black and white to a color, you end up with the original color? Yeah, but it's a muted shade of it. It's a muted shade of it. So anytime you, uh, it, black and white makes a gray. So you're graying something out. Let me show you. So then it, the most important part is a uh, hi to Tana and to both Sean's. <laughs> yeah, hi to Tana and both Sean's. Uh, oh, is that the same sister that your Sean was married to? Yeah. Yes, that's the one. Okay. Brief, briefly. So in the can. Very brief. I need a stir stick again. Use the same paintbrush. See, Tana, this is when you sign off. Okay, black cherry is a richer purple, and so I muted it. I added a little bit of gray to it with the black and the white. It mutes it. So you can create muted shades of any color by adding gray to them. Let's see if I can get it to mix. I got a lot of black. So if I take my base of black cherry, you can see that it's darker. But if I add a little bit of my black to it, you can start to see it going. So I'm telling you, a good black and a good white goes a long way. You will be able to mix a whole bunch of colors. That's a little too much white. Whoa. Whoa, now we just crossed the line. <laughs> your Sean was married to your sister's Sean. Yeah, no. Uh, no, that, that's a whole nother, that's yeah. a whole nother yeah. episode. Eh. Okay, so basically what I just did here, and let me put it side by side with the original black cherry so you can see the color out of the container. It just mutes it a little tiny bit. This is black cherry unmixed. This is black cherry with black and white in it. It just mutes the tone a little bit. 
Okay, it's a very subtle difference, um, but it took the shade down a little bit. And that's all I was trying to do. Okay, so in the centers here, I'm gonna add a little bit of water. I'm gonna find my brush first. I think this is it. Nope, this one is it. And add a little bit of water, get that really thin coat because I want a little bit of that black, um, of that black cherry mix that I can brush into my white. Just a very thin layer. It's diluted. I can still see my um, gray primer in through there. And then I'll just add a little bit of this white that I just dripped down the front. No, no, Yvonne. Just went super uncomfortable. <laughs> Not triple X. It's just yeah, super it's uncomfortable. Nothing weird. Yeah, totally normal. Oh, here we go. Brother husbands. Yeah, yeah. brother husbands. Hi, Emily. Sean yep. is my sister's uh, brother husband. Yep. This is good. This makes for good family talk at the dinner table. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sean and Tana don't talk about this. Piece of my own hair in there. Nice. All right, so I got that white highlight in the center, and now I'm going back with my brush for my purple, and I'm just going to kind of brush it in. Just want it to be a little bit just in the center. This is just my base coat. All right, I'm gonna come in with my uh, dry neutral brush and I'm gonna brush these together. All right, and I will fix that on my second coat because I wanna make sure that I've got it even on both sides, that it's nicely centered. But I just want a little bit of a highlight in the center there. That's all I'm trying to get to. All right, so this will be kind of my, I'll repeat this on the other side. I'm not going to scoot over there because I'll have to go in front of the camera. Um, and then around the sides, my back is going to be just the solid purple. I will also do this edge right here will be painted. Park, I hear water outside. It is raining. All right, so that edge will be done, and then we'll start decorating this, and it'll start getting really pretty. With that deep wood top. Yes. Preach it, Tana. NDA. <laughs> Neither had to sign that, but we both abide. I know, Tan, you'll never live it down. See, mistakes you make when you're 20, right? 19? Mary and your brother-in-law. I mean, <laughs> if you only knew that <laughs> then what you know now, that you would never live it down. Oh, man. All right, guys, we covered a lot of information tonight. That was a lot of stuff. I really wanted to talk about the wood stain um, and still get some paint on this. I'm going to finish up this base coat. So when we come back next week, this will have a really rough coat on it. And we will really clean this up and perfect the, the paint on this one. Um, and I should have the wood stain on the top. And then we can start decorating it, too. So I always start with my... Oh, Sherry's writing rhymes. Oh, Sherry. The perfect piece for your niece. Uh, yeah, I hope she will like it. Um, my sister kind of gives me free reign. She's a good customer, but she also pays me terribly. So it's only fair, right? You get what you pay for? Ooh, would I rather hear the rooster? Carl, hmm. uh, well, you don't you don't even have the option anymore because yeah, that's true. we don't know. Carl disappeared. Carl was our neighbor's rooster who used to crow 24-7. An untimely demise was yeah. planned for that one. Carl is no more. We don't know where he Been went. We had nothing to do with it, I swear. Time. We had gotten used to Carl, but Carl is no more. So let's all say a prayer for Carl tonight. All right, you guys, I'm going to pop off. I'm going to finish this coat, come back next week, and we will go on the next step of this. Um, yeah, housekeeping stuff. Um, oh, I did want to tell you guys, I um, have a feature coming up in the Turquoise Iris Journal, which is uh, Dion with the Turquoise Iris. It's her magazine. Um, that comes out on January 13th. I'll have a spread in there. I wrote a bunch of stuff. I worked, we worked really hard, me and Dion. She does an amazing job putting that publication together. It was her dream and it is her baby. And I have so much respect for how well she's done it. 
Um, so you guys check out the Turquoise Iris Journal coming out on January 13th. I'll keep posting as soon as that's available. I'm still going to be in Temecula, California the first week in March. You better, because I have a party planned. But the tickets haven't gone up yet. I keep telling you guys that. They, they are going up. Uh, it's just been the holidays, and nobody works. So uh, keep an eye out for <clears> that. <throat> I'll be posting on that. I do have a YouTube video coming out. Uh, we're going to explore more with surf prep. And, um, and then I also have the piece that we just finished together that will come out on video soon, too. All right, you guys. Stay safe. Everybody is getting drenched right now, including us. So stay safe out there. Don't drive through the rain. Check out Johnson Tree Care if you need any tree service in California. Sacramento, Sacramento area. area. And other than I will let you guys go. Have a great weekend.